good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're going to be discussing what happened last night at AEW's first ever event, guys, Double or Nothing, live from Las Vegas, Nevada. So many expectations for this show, you know, a lot of a lot of hype surrounding this show, a lot of a lot of talent packed into this card. I was super excited for it. And let's go ahead and get this out of the way, guys. John Moxley, Dean Ambrose is a part of All Elite Wrestling. He has signed with AEW. Huge news for the company, guys. I'm super excited to see Dean Ambrose show up after Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho's match. Chris Jericho defeated Kenny Omega clean, which in a fantastic match. I was totally shocked that Kenny Omega lost here. I guess just because it's Kenny Omega, you know, he can he can take an L here. You know, they're not on TV just yet, but I think when they get to TV in the fall on TNT, he definitely needs to be their top guy and their top star, so hopefully, you know, he, he won't be losing early on when the, uh, you know, when they start hitting TV all the time, because I want people to know just how special and big that Kenny Omega is, but he loses here to Chris Jericho after a code breaker and after a Judas effect, which is his new uh, finisher, Chris Jericho's new finisher. After the matchup, John John Moxley would come out of the crowd, get in the ring, hit a dirty deeds on Jericho, hit a dirty deeds on the referee, and then turn his focus on a Kenny Omega. John Moxley and Kenny Omega would battle outside the ring. They would go into the crowd, beat the hell out of each other. They would go up to the stage where there were some poker chips, you know, stacked up part of the, you know, the entranceway, part of the gimmick, part of the stage design. They would get on top of the poker chips, and he hit a dirty deeds on Kenny Omega on top of those poker chips. And what a way to close out a fantastic show, guys. I I was totally impressed the whole way through. I mean, every single match had its highlights. There, there were a few things that I did not like about the show. One thing that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get my negatives out of the way because I think that it's important because this show is by far not perfect by any means, but I was very, very impressed. I loved this show. I think this show was absolutely fantastic. And once I develop a connection with some of this talent and once I develop, you know, stories and everything and the, the story arc behind some of these characters, I think that, oh guys, I think that WWE could be in some major trouble. So let's start off with the things I didn't like, guys. The the Casino Battle Royale on the pre-show. Now, this, this match right here was by far the worst match. I did not like this at all. Okay, first of all, there was way too many comedy spots. There were, uh, there were some spots that I just did not... I don't know. There was like a lot of dead air. There was. I feel like you could definitely see the talent level between the pre-show and the main show. The pre-show, you had these guys that you know they're they're not quite there yet. They're not this level of experience. They're not. You know what I'm saying? They're not as talented. They're not as clean. They're not as crisp. And you could even tell the difference between Adam Hangman Page and the talent that was in this matchup. I mean, you had your standout stars, but for the most part in that Battle Royal, guys, there was a lot of, uh, there were some botches in that. There was a lot of dead air, you know. Maybe it wasn't well thought out. Maybe they didn't know what to do all the time. The former Ty Dillinger does show up. He's not pictured here, but he does show up in the Casino Battle Royale. It was announced, you know, on his, his Instagram. He did show up. He didn't even make a presence, guys. He got eliminated by a man with no legs, and I'm not, you know, crapping on the man with no legs. I'm just saying that the what a way to, you know, start your debut. I think he was, like, one of the first three or four people eliminated in this battle royal, and he, he was eliminated by a guy with no legs. I just, I, I just don't, uh, I don't know. I just, it, like, I, I feel like if that had been WWE, what would the people be saying? You know what I'm saying? So, I think I have to knock it down there. That is definitely a negative for me. I think that Ty Dillinger, you know, he was getting tons and tons of support from the crowd, but that is just something I wanted to take note of. Adam Hangman Page was winning, was totally predictable, but I agree with it. I think that he was, he is definitely a big star. MJF is effing fantastic. I love MJF. I think that he is one of the best heels in the business. I think that he is so believable, guys. I think he's fantastic. If you guys don't know who MJF is, he is he is absolutely brilliant. I don't know. They, they definitely established who are going to be some top stars in this company, and I was impressed, man. I, I freaking love this show, but that battle Royal was definitely not my favorite. The other match that was on the pre-show, the, the two Cruiserweight guys, Kip Sabian and Sammy Guevara, not a huge fan of the match. It wasn't bad by any means, but, you know, nothing nothing too crazy. Again, you can kind of tell, you know, they're a little bit inexperienced. 
but I did enjoy the match. On to the main show, guys. They hit it running. I mean, all the freaking matches, man. They were just killing it. All the tag team matches were brilliant, man. I loved that they put an emphasis on tag team wrestling moves. If you guys did not watch the show, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you go and check it out. Go watch the highlights. Do something. But the six-man tag between SCU and uh, the Stronghearts was absolutely amazing. Better than every six-man tag we've, we've seen from WWE in the last 10 years. Cody Rhodes versus Dustin, guys. Dustin, if you guys miss blood in your wrestling, Dustin Rhodes slash Gold Dust bled all over that damn ring, guys. It, it made me uncomfortable at times. This man was bleeding so bad. Like, blood covered the ring. Cody Rhodes had blood all over him, and it wasn't even his own blood. I mean, these guys beat the hell out of each other, told a beautiful story. Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho, obviously, they're going to deliver. The Young Bucks versus Pentagon and Phoenix was freaking incredible. The Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks tore the freaking house down. I'm excited to see what they rate all these matches, guys, because they, they just tore it down, man. And then the, the final just exclamation point on the show for John Moxley to show up is so beautiful, man. I, I just loved it, man. I, I cannot wait for fall. I cannot wait for weekly television. Um, one thing to note, a lot of people are crapping on Cody Rhodes because at one point during his entrance, uh, when he comes out, there was a Triple H replica thrown out there, and he comes out there, he walks down to the ring, Brandy uh, reveals a sledgehammer under the ring, he takes the sledgehammer, goes up to the crowd, or goes up to the throne, and breaks it apart, and the crowd was going nuts for this. This is what makes professional wrestling so great. I think this was so nice, so unique, so beautiful, because it's, it's, I don't know, man, it's just like, that's like a wrestling mark moment. Like, it's not supposed to be taken as ill-willed. It's not supposed to be taken as whatever. It's supposed to be taken as we're here and we're going to do this thing even if nobody believes we can. And I just think that was fantastic. Like, my God, guys, like, I love moments like that. We love... How come it's okay when WWE takes digs at other promotions, but it's not okay for AEW to take a dig at WWE? I think that's absurd. I think that's ridiculous. And I think that it's okay to take digs at other promotions and other people in the business. I think it's it's just what makes professional wrestling professional wrestling. Like, I, I love it. I love a freaking rivalry. I love, you know, mentioning either one. Like... Is WWE going to come back with anything? I highly doubt it, at least not at this stage. But I love this show, guys. I, I really did. I think you should go and check it out. I was just totally blown away. I didn't expect any less, though. I expected a great show. I expected it to be fantastic. I was so ecstatic going into this, into this show. And I'm seeing a lot of negativity from people that maybe don't keep up with some of this talent. Maybe they don't, you know, watch these guys on a regular basis. But... I still, I still think if you sit down and you didn't know a single man in these matches, they were still fantastic matches. Like, I don't know what you expect because there was no way for them to build storylines. Outside of a couple matches, I think these two matches here and then maybe the Young Bucks and the Lucha Bros, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho, and Dustin versus Cody, those were their, you know, three main events, if you will. And I understand, you should understand that they haven't had any time to build up any storylines, guys. There, there haven't been any shows. This is their first show to establish who they are, what they're going to be about. How in the hell are they supposed to tell you who everybody is when they only have one show to do so? I think they showcased themselves beautifully here. I thought that their, you know, storytelling in the matches were, were beautiful. I think that there was a story when in all of these matchups, um, in every single match. The, another thing that is negative is the six women tag. I thought it went a little bit too long. I was not a fan of the length of that matchup. But those women beat the absolute hell out of each other. And I can't remember what the woman's name was, but the, the shaved head, pink haired woman is one of my favorite women in all of wrestling now. Based off that one match, the charisma, the, the hard hitting, the strong style, just beautiful work by everybody involved in the show. Hats off to the Khan family, Kenny Omega, the Bucks, the whole AEW roster, Cody Rhodes, Brandy Rhodes, everyone involved. Fantastic show, man. I hats off to you. Hats off to you. And I think that I am super excited moving forward to see this on wiki, weekly television. I'm going to be super ecstatic. And I know that the game's going to change once they do that, guys. How are they going to book storylines? How are they going to keep me entertained? That is going to be something going forward. But I think they knocked it out of the park with this first show. And you should most definitely go watch it, whether you see the, the highlights somewhere or you see like a, a live stream somewhere that has the full show. I highly recommend you go check it out. And you definitely should. 
but that is it guys John Moxley Dean Ambrose does return to professional wrestling he turns his back here on WWE and I love it I think that's fantastic and I don't think WWE knew about this move I, I honestly do not think so because I think they would have locked him up with his contract and stuff had they known about it but oh my god man what a show I loved it and I cannot wait for more their next show is all out in on August 31st live from Chicago I think that's when we're going to see CM Punk I, I genuinely think that is when we'll see CM Punk August 31st at all out in Chicago Illinois going to be good stuff man but thank you guys for watching I hope you guys enjoyed the video I know it's just my thoughts with some figures in front of it but man that, that was fantastic stuff bro what good stuff thank you guys for watching subscribe to the channel. If you guys watch the show, please let me know down in the comment section below what you thought. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE, AEW, and epic action figure wrestling figure videos. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.